Hello, my friends, and welcome to Metro TV. I'm your host, Andy Hoyk, publisher and CEO of Metro Magazine and Midlands Business Journal. We have a great show for you today. I'm talking to folks from the Midlands Humane Society, Make-A-Wish Foundation Nebraska, and Project Houseworks. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, hello, my friends. I am so excited to be sitting here with Corey Nelson. She is the develop the D- director of development and marketing for the Midlands Humane Society. Corey, it's so good to see you again. It's been a while. It has been. Thank you, Andy. It's nice to be on here with you as well. Well, you've got a couple of events um, coming up. Uh, the main one um, is the annual Midlands Humane Society, um, your gala, Living life out loud. Do you have a different theme every year? We do. So it used to be known as the Derby. And then we started trying to move away from the Derby name and just went with a gala theme. And then every year we get a focus on something a little bit different. So um, living, living life out loud, we just thought pets and animals, humans all together. um, We definitely live life out loud most every day. So we thought we could have some fun fun with this kind of vacation images, beach themes, dogs on surfboards, you know, cats okay. taking selfies and uh, just really play it up and have a good time. Yeah. So we're, you're back together live this year. Cause I know last year um, it was virtual. I had the honor, me and Donna Doskal had the honor of being the, the virtual MC, but it's live again. It, we're back live again. It is live again. It is in person. Um, we are shooting for everything to happen as planned on September 17th at the Mid-America Center. And you guys were fantastic hosts. Hopefully you guys can come join yeah. in the in-person event this year. But when it comes to animals, there really is nothing that compares to being up close and personal with yep. them, touching them, um, hearing them. And the in-person gala is just, you know, by far and away our 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 goal every year. So we're uh, yeah. gearing up for it. Yep. So the money's raised go to the Midlands Humane Society. So just tell us a little bit about the Midlands Humane Society. Sure. So we opened up in 2015. We are the first and only humane society in this area. So we service a 90,000 plus population and then far more if you consider all of the adoptions that happen you know, in Omaha and Glenwood, um, even, you know, Missouri and across state lines. So we do have a pretty big footprint and we're, we're happy to be able to say that, that we're able to help so many animals in the area and actually um, out of state rescues when we can as well. So right. those are overcrowded. We can, when we can move them in, we sure try to. And your, your new building over in Council Bluffs, I mean, it, it's not 100 I mean it's not new new but it opened up not too long ago over in council plus right not re- no not that long ago yet we are in our sixth year so okay. we are we're 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 crowded um but we're we're making it work for now um, yeah always have the sights set on you know what is going to be you know in the next five years in the next 10 years you know we're always thinking with our um our board and and what's going to be the next thing that we need to do to accomplish our goals and assist with our mission but for right now, we're at on um, Railroad Avenue, really easy access off the interstate. Yep. So, yep. Well, let's then talk a little bit about your fourth annual Wags and Wheels car show. Okay. So we like to hit a, ver- a variety of audiences. So absolutely looking for an animal to adopt, but you might really like cars and, and you might adopt an animal later. So our fourth annual Wags and Wheels is held up at Thunder Bowl. We have no... Um, no limitations this year as to numbers like we did last year, except for just physical space. So we're hoping for maybe 125 cars, mm-hmm. we have 13 classes of vehicles that people can enter in. Um, they can enter it at motoshow, M-O-T-O-S-H-O.com, and they can do all their online registrations through that. Food and drink, live band, animals, raffle prizes. Um, it's a blast. And I've learned a lot about cars in the last couple of years. So we, we have people that repeat visit. Um, they have a great time and they bring your, their friends. So um, and when, it, when is it? 29th. Okay. So the, so the was 29th. So that's, that's coming up here at the end of the month. Right so, up. Yep. Yeah. All right. Wags. Um, 
Wags and Wheels Car Show, August 29th, um, annual gala, Living Out Loud on September 17th. Um, I want to share a personal story that I have with the uh, Midlands Humane Society. Um, very, totally unexpected, but you know, you know it, but I'm just going to share with, with the viewers and we'll be showing a couple pictures. Uh, but last, last year when I, uh, emceed the virtual event, I was, I was getting ready. I was getting ready to adopt another kitty. I, I have two Raj and Sophie. So I was over there and I've spent lots of, you know, I was in the little room checking out the kittens and you know, having one at a time come in with me. And I remember you said to me, oh my gosh, I have to introduce you to this kitten. And I'm like, okay. And um, you brought out this beautiful little bundle of orange joy. And at the time her name was Sissy, I believe. Yep. Um, and, uh, and, and she had to have her eyes removed. They were born, she was born with underdeveloped eyes and, and they, you know, they needed to be removed. So you brought me out this little beautiful blind kitty and, um, I absolutely fell in love. And because I was leaving town, I, I just remember I, I would come over and I would first, I visited a couple times before I think I said yes, or maybe I visited one time before I said yes. And then I came over several more times, but, um, ended up naming her sunshine and she is a beautiful ball of sunshine and it's appropriate. You have sunflowers behind you. Oh, that. isn't it? See? <laughs> yes. It be. <laughs> yeah. And again, you guys were so, were so great. And um, again, I, I visited her quite a few times and you guys are so easy to find and you're so conveniently located, but I just, I mean, I just want to thank you. She, she has changed the whole dynamic of the family, you know, the kitty family here. Yep. And I send you lots of, of photos too, but you do. I love yeah. it. Well, and we have an animal control officer that we work with and we love her very much. And she says, you don't always get the animal that you want. You get the animal that you need. And Absolutely. That, that rings so true to so many people that the animal kind of calls out to them and sometimes vice versa, but she was this the, the right fit for your house at that time. And she's grown accustomed to all that you can offer her. So we thank you for being such a great adopter Yeah, um, uh, to her. And I just want to mention too, um, you know, the, the having a blind kitty, you know, there are, there are considerations you have to take, but you would not know that she no. could not see. She no. plays fetch down the stairs. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just amazing. So I think speaking to, cats that, I mean, disabled, I don't, even, I don't like that word, but, but have some right. kind of, you and know, special need. Yeah. 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 I think, and there are definitely people out there that, that really are open and willing and want to bring a special needs animal into their home. And whether that might be an amputation or maybe you're treating a heartworm positive dog, there's all kinds of little things that you might need to do, but in the end, it's, it's really not that different. They, their other senses kind of compensate for what maybe they're missing, just like in people. Um, so, you know, she, your pictures, I love seeing them. And when they, when your name pops up on my screen, I'm always like, oh, it's a new picture of, of sunshine. So, yeah. So, um, but if people, if they want to see, we do have a new website. So, right. Um, humane society.org. You can pull that up, easily find lots of animals, um, all the adaptable animals. You can learn more about us, our mission. You can see what we're doing with, working cat programs, um, you know, if you need help with your animal, we've got all kinds of things on that site, how to be a volunteer, donate, you name it. And then also um, all of our events. So you can click on the uh, events page um, and find, find ways to register and get more info on those events. So check that out. Um, we hope you enjoy it. And we do a blog on there every week. So you can find our articles from the Daily Nonpareil that are on there and learn, learn more about us and animal tips too. So wonderful, wonderful. Well, Corey, it's so good to see you. Thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. And encourage everybody to check out your new website and Great. get out to those events. So again, Perfect. thanks so much. Thank you. And folks, we'll be right back.
I am here with Emily Marston. She is the marketing and events manager for Make-A-Wish Nebraska. Emily, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you too. Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Well, you've got your uh, annual event coming up. It's just, it's coming up in the next week or two. Um, And this year, are we back in person? We are. We are so excited to be back in person. You know, last year with everything going on. We had to go virtual for uh, this annual gala event, uh, the Blue Jean Ball. And we are finally, um, after moving it around a little bit, we are finally back in person on August 14th. August 14th. And I I love this event, Um, the Blue Jean Ball. uh, how, How many years Oh gosh. I mean, we've been doing it for, for a long time. We've been here. <laughs> for, yeah. For a long time. Um, but again, it's one of, it's one of my favorite events. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about, um, so it's August 14th. Where's it at? And give us all the details. Yeah. So it is um, at the Hilton downtown Omaha. Um, it's going to be amazing. We'll have our usual dinner, um, drinks, all of that. We will have a silent auction, a live auction. Uh, We'll also get to share some of the wish stories um, from the wishes we have been granting recently, uh, which we're really excited to share with guests. Um, Of course, it'll still look a little bit different, you know, putting in different precautions, but we are excited just to be in person again and be able to talk and interact with our guests, um, almost like it's a normal year again. Absolutely. Well, and then let's just talk about Make-A-Wish, the organization itself. Um, Tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah. Uh, So we grant wishes for children um, who are battling critical illnesses right here in Nebraska. Our chapter covers the entire state of Nebraska, every county across the state. Um, We try to reach as many wish kids as possible and um, get their wishes granted. And we are just uh, very thankful that even though the world seemed to have stopped um, last year with everything, um, we have never stopped granting wishes. Uh, We were still able to grant wishes last year. Um, Despite COVID, we were able to grant 64 wishes in Nebraska and we continue to keep granting wishes. So we're just really excited to, to share those uh, new wish stories that we have with our guests at the Blue Jean Ball and just across the state and yeah. um, hopefully, hopefully continue granting. Well, what's like, what is a, what's a typical wish? I mean, what are people, what, I mean, maybe I, typical, it's not, I, that's not the right word, but what do, what are these kids wish for? Yeah. So, you know, we have some of the most creative kids, um, the things that they think up are amazing. Uh, we have recently had a lot of camper wishes. Uh, that is very popular. A lot of people wanting to get out, go camping, be in nature, um, but obviously do it safely because you are sure. still working with children who have these critical illnesses. Um, we have a lot of ba- uh, backyard play structures are very popular. Uh, you know, who doesn't want their very own private park in their backyard. Um, And we also get, you know, hot tubs and swimming pools and shopping sprees are really popular. We've had um, also a lot of gaming systems have been very popular this year, especially with all the, all the new um, stations that have been coming out and everyone wants the latest and greatest technology. So those are very popular as well. And, and, and I think it's great. Like you said last year, I mean, 64 wishes, um, during, um, during the pandemic, um, you know, when things really were in, in lockdown and, and, you know, kids, kids couldn't go out and especially, um, these children. Uh, so how can people, um, I know the blue jean ball raises fun, funds for wishes, but if we can't get to the blue jean ball, how can people support you? Yeah. So like you said, obviously with this event in particular, we are asking for financial donations to help fund these wishes. Um, However, we understand not everyone can make a financial donation and, you know, times were tough uh, for lots of people this past year. Uh, So we also uh, definitely encourage people to donate almost what I consider their most valuable asset, which is their time. Uh, We 
always need volunteers. And especially as a lot of our services are starting to pick up again, you know, we need volunteers to help grant wishes. We need volunteers to help at our events. We need volunteers to um, help out in our office. So we definitely need, um, we need those volunteers. And we ask people if uh, you're not able to financially support, absolutely, you know, we need we need your time. We need your help. We need, it's a, it's a full community uh, effort to make these wishes come true. Absolute. Absolutely. Well, encouraging everybody, um, August 14th, which is coming right up the blue jean ball. But again, there's also ways that you can, um, support make a wish foundation, Nebraska, um, year round. So Emily, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. And it's so good to see you. Yes, it's great to see you too. And thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes. And folks, we will be right back. I am here with Sarah Sabalowskis. She is the uh, Director of Community Relations and Marketing for Project Houseworks. Sarah, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm excited to hear about Brush Up, which is coming up here later in the month um, of August. And um, let's just, what is it? What is the Brush Up event? So Brush Up this year will be celebrating its 32nd annual anniversary. So it's a long-standing community event, and it is a wraparound service, um, and it is completely free exterior painting done by community volunteers for our low-income senior homeowners enrolled in our program. Um, and why don't you just tell it just briefly, Project Houseworks, who do you, I mean, tell me the mission and who do you serve? Sure. So we provide low-income senior homeowners with free home repairs and modifications so they can stay in their homes and age in place safely. Okay. And you guys do just an amazing job. I mean, I, I, I'm familiar with the organization. Um, love Lynette, the executive director, and um, you guys just do amazing, amazing work. So let's first, um, how does a senior qualify to have their home painted? Sure. So um, the qualifications for brush up are just the same as our project houseworks program. And to qualify, you have to be 60 or older, own your home, live in Douglas or Sarpy County and be at 50% or below area median income, which for a one income household is approximately $2,500 a month or less. Okay. However, most of our seniors, their average monthly income is just at $1,500. So they're okay. well below 50% AMI. Absolutely. Um, okay. We did talk briefly before we started recording um, about 2020. You did, you had the event in 2020, just, you know, despite COVID um, and it's an out, you're painting houses, you're outdoors and and all Mm -hmm. that good stuff. So how did, how did that event, how did that, how did it go? Well, um, the fact that it happened is a success. And even like you said, despite COVID, um, we still were able to paint 24 homes which was very incredible. We were really pleased with that. Um, so that means 24 seniors had their house painted for free and any, any homeowner who has looked into getting their house painted knows it is very, very expensive. Yeah. So um, to be able to do that for 24 seniors was wonderful. And um, this year is bigger and better than ever. I think if anything, COVID has really taught us that there's nothing more important than your neighbor and your community. And so we're really feeling that with our um, corporate teams and our community groups who are coming out in a big way. And so we have 38 teams, or I'm sorry, 
no, we have 15, one, 50 teams. 50 teams. Um, some, some have combined, um, depending on their size and their experience sure. level. And we are painting 38 homes. Oh my gosh, that's great. It's that, incredible. That's wonderful. No, I'm sorry, uh, I lied. 36 homes, sorry. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. 36, 38. 36, but, but still, it's pretty awesome. That's a lot of homes. Um, can people still volunteer or is that something that you already have in place? Well, with the event quickly approaching on the 21st of this month, oh. we do have everything um, in place. We have about 800 volunteers this year. Wow. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of coordination. So, Absolutely. Um, everything is kind of already set in place and now it's sure. the home home stretch. However, we start planning this event the end of this year. So if anyone is interested in volunteering, I know next August seems like a very long ways away, but for us, we're going to be in the thick of planning um, right when the new year kicks off. And so if you are interested, please reach out and let's get you going right away. So that way we don't miss you in between that the, the deadline of team registration and the event happening. Absolutely. So you're painting 36 houses this year. How like do you is the need greater than 36 houses? Well, yes, it is. But we have to um, there are certain other things that go into matching right. a team with a home. Sure. So we've had a lot of home homeowners apply, but their home is simply too big for volunteers to get on ladders. A lot of our teams Got are it. comfortable getting on ladders, but we've had we have almost like three story homes that that's just too big of a project um, and then also depending on we want to make sure that the volunteers have a great experience not only are they safe but you know it's a really wonderful um, community like relationship moment between that homeowner sure. and the volunteer team so there's a lot of things that go into that um, so the need is great it's just a matter of finding the right home for the right volunteer team. Absolutely. I mean, and that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Well, let's talk a little bit about just in the last minute we have here. Um, how can people contribute to Project um, Houseworks um, aside from Brush Up? Sure. I think, honestly, the most um, most important piece is just being our advocate, our community ambassador. So if you know a senior that needs help with their home, please have them call us. And then also um, the second most important part of that is if you want to um, become involved with our organization, whether it be a financial contribution, you want to volunteer in some way outside of Brush Up, we always are um, welcoming and open to those kinds of um, you know opportunities. So if you're interested in learning more, we could come and do a lunch and learn at your business or for your community group or your church, whatever it may, it may be. We're always happy and willing to just spread the word about our programs. Absolutely. Well, Sarah, um, any last words in the last like 15 seconds, final, final words? Just thank you to you, Andy, for all of your support of Project Houseworks and, you know, the seniors that we're helping. You are so welcome. And thank you so much for coming on the show today and encourage everybody. Um, if you're not a volunteer this year, um, we'll, we'll make an announcement as we get to the first of the year, just to remind folks that they can start, um, you know, applying, registering to volunteers. So Sarah, thank, thank you, you once again. Thank you, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to pick up a copy of our latest issue of Metro Magazine, our Celebrating Women issue. You can pick up a copy at The Bookworm, find them in area salons, or subscribe online at spiritofomaha.com. I look forward to seeing you back here next week.